Welcome to The Spotlight, the podcast where veterans and military spouses connect and share how their military experience has transformed their lives and their businesses. Here's your host, Bob Lalvin. Hey, this is your host, Bob Lalvin, founder of the Veteran Crowd Network, the network that brings veterans and veteran-led businesses together with each other and the resources they need to prosper. And you are tuning into The Spotlight. Welcome to the Spotlight. This is your host, Bob Lalvin. I am uh, pleased to have as my guest today a New York Times bestselling author. You know, uh, uh, Tom Clancy died in 2013, but our guy today is actually writing books with Tom Clancy's name on the front of them. Very interesting guy. Please help me welcome Don Bentley. Don, welcome to the Veteran Crowd Spotlight. Thank you for stepping into the program. Thanks for having me, Bob. Hey, I, you know, always, I have a lot of authors on then, and, and I just want to know, who is Matt Drake? <laughs> so Matt was... Drake, he, he is my protagonist in, in the series. As you mentioned before, I'm lucky enough, I get to write two different series. And so one is the Tom Clancy, Jack Ryan Jr. series. And then the second series is my series that has Matt Drake in it. And, and when my first book, Without Sanction, came out, I had a, uh, I was doing a radio interviewer and, and the radio interviewer said, are you Matt Drake? And I said, I am absolutely not Matt Drake, but I've been privileged enough to stand in the room with him before. And, and so, I, you know, I, I say that to say that I've been, I've had a very um, interesting career in, in between being in the army and then the FBI. And then I worked in a number of small businesses that, that made and marketed technology primarily to the intelligence community and special operations command. And that gave me the opportunity to rub shoulders with some really interesting people. And so when I went to write this series, there are already an amazing um, number of, of fantastic authors, people like Mark Graney and Brad Taylor and, and Jack Carr and the like that have these incredible iconic characters. And so I wanted to do something that was a little bit same but different. And so when I was an FBI agent, my job was to run and recruit what we call sources and what folks in the intelligence community call assets. And so I knew I wanted my um, protagonist to be a case officer, somebody that ran and recruited assets. And so what I wanted to do with him that was a little different is uh, make him a member of the DIA, the Defense Intelligence Agency, as opposed to the CIA, which people are much more familiar with. And the DIA is an organization that, that reports um, through DOD and, and has a budget um, that's completely different than the CIA, but a mission set that is very similar. And so there's a lot of great built-in tension between those two organizations. And then I also, when I got out of the FBI, I was lucky enough to work for a veteran-owned small company that was founded uh, by a number of members from the Ranger Regiment. And so three of those guys are, are still my closest friends now. And I got to Though I was never never went to Ranger School and did not serve in the Ranger Regiment, I really got to view the world through their eyes and see how there's this this document called the Ranger Creed, which to you or I would would seem like just another HR statement, but to them is something that governed their lives both in the Ranger Regiment and outside of it. And so I really wanted to take that and fold that into my story as well. And so Matt Drake is a veteran of the Ranger Regiment, in addition to being a, C a DIA case officer. And so he's the one that forms the back um, backbone of, of my series. And he's also, I write him as a, as a first person point of view. He has a very witty voice and it was very heavily influenced by another uh, idol of mine, Nelson DeMille, who writes the great um, John Corey series among other things. And I remember reading the first book in that, um, which is called Plum Island. And I got done. I thought, man, I would read about this guy going to the gas station because he's so funny and it's so oh, yeah. engaging. And so those kind of things came together and, and Matt and Drake is, is what came out of them. Well, that's fantastic. You know, tell everybody about the, the, the Jack Ryan Jr. series. You know, yeah. Tom, again, Tom Clancy passed away in what, what eight years ago now, I think. And, yeah. and I consumed his books. I mean, I remember specifically reading The Hunt for Red October, yep. you know, yep. and uh, the guy just could really, you know, paint a great picture. Tell us, tell us about, uh, tell us about Jack Ryan Jr., though. Sure. 
Yeah, so what's really interesting with the Clancy books is that um, before Tom died, they, they kind of divided the world up in two, if you will. And so Jack Ryan Sr., who's the iconic character from Hunt for the Red October that Alec Baldwin played, um, in, in the Tom Clancy universe, he is president and will probably be president for the rest of his life or the rest of the series life. And so as you can imagine, it gets hard to, uh, the Secret Service frowns on the president going out and kicking in doors and shooting bad guys in the face. And so Tom Clancy <laughs> kind of had to come up with a way of how do I, how do I still keep this iconic character alive, if you will, but provide a venue for fans to experience what they loved in Rainbow Six and Clear and Present Danger and all the other um, Clancy books. And so what he did is Jack Ryan Jr., who is, who is Jack Ryan Sr.'s son, became an organization or a member of this organization called the Campus, which is this off the book, semi-legitimate le intelligence organization and became an operative for um, that group. And so what's, what's, what I tell folks is that the, um, I think, um, Alec Baldwin is probably my favorite Jack Ryan senior. My second favorite one is um, John Kaczynski. I think you say his name. I always mess mm -hmm. that up. And in the age that John Kaczynski is in the Amazon series is the age that Jack Ryan Jr. is in the books. And so if you think of him, you can kind of think of Jack Ryan Jr. And that's what I tell folks. And so what, what makes Jack Ryan Jr. a really compelling character to write, it's unlike Almost every other character, every other character in the thriller universe, if you will, has a resume that that um, lends credence to what they do. They were a former army ranger like my protagonist or a CIA paramilitary officer or what have you. Jack Ryan Jr. wasn't any of that. He was a, he was a guy whose last name was Ryan. And so he got the chance to do this. And so he really had to prove himself as a character of, of, of being worthy of being in the likes of like John Clark and Dingo Chavez and Ding Chavez, all these people that are legacy characters in the Clancy universe. And so it's been very, very interesting to watch his progression from a financial analyst to now somebody who is a paramilitary operative. And then to be able to write that and kind of dive into what makes him tick and frankly, what makes him different from a lot of other protagonists out there. Fantastic stuff. So, so uh, how did you uh, discover you were a writer? I mean, here you are, you know, shooting bad guys in Afghanistan. Uh, you know, uh, have you always wanted to write? Did you, did you know you had the skill? I didn't know I had the skill for sure. But yeah, I always wanted to write. I was a storyteller. I think most writers start off as storytellers. And so for the way, the way that kind of manifests for me is I remember being as a kid and, and either reading a book and finishing it or watching a movie I really liked and and on one hand, you really like it. And then on the other hand, you're thinking in the back of your mind, man, if they would have tweaked this or this, or they would have done this differently, the whole arc of the movie could have been different or the whole arc of the book. And so I started um, you know, writing when I was very, very young, probably third or fourth grade and, and started working on my first book um, probably when I was in high school. And I was lucky enough to have a very good um, teacher my senior year uh, of high school my AP English teacher, her name is Jill Easter, and she was very, very encouraging to the point where I, I had turned in something for class, and she pulled me aside, and she said, you're good at this, like, you're good at enough at this to do it for a living, and so I heeded her advice and went to the Ohio State University and got a degree in electrical engineering, like all good writers do, and I was going to uh, say, <laughs> didn't didn't quite follow. I figured it was easier to be a, a struggling writer on the side uh, who had a day job that could pay the bills than than the other way around. And so I spent uh, a number of years, I actually wrote three books um, that didn't sell before I wrote Without Sanction that did. And uh, one of those I actually worked on while I was in Afghanistan. And so it's you know, it took me uh, 17 years and three books that didn't sell before becoming an overnight success. So I think yeah. um, actually that story, hopefully not the 17 years, but that story of writing multiple books that don't sell is, is pretty common among writers because you you have to learn your craft in the same way that, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to be a plumber, you don't start out as a master plumber. You have to start out as an apprentice and then progress to journeyman and kind of do that. And writing is, is very much the same way. And it took me a while to, to learn my craft. I went back and actually used the GI Bill to get an MFA uh, a couple of years after I got out of the Army, which helped as well. Um, but there's a whole bunch of learning in that, but I always knew I wanted to tell stories for a living. 
Who produces the Tom Clancy series? And, uh, and what was it like when they called you? Yeah, it was pretty incredible. So I'm very, I'm fortunate for a number of reasons. Um, but I get to work with an editor uh, whose name is Tom Colgan. And he has edited everybody from, he was Tom Clancy's editor before Tom died, to um, Lee Child, who writes Jack Reacher, to Janet Ivanovich, to everybody in between. And so he was the one that bought my Matt Drake books, the first uh, book he bought in a two book series. And when I turned in the second book, which was which is called The Outside Man, you have something that's called the editorial call. So it's a lot like being in fourth grade and, and realizing that you've forgotten your homework that day. So you you turn in your book and then you're anxiously waiting for your editor to come back and, and tell you what they think. And so we had a long discussion about the outside man and some ways he thought I could make it better. And then at the end of it, in a very Columbo-esque moment, he said, you know, just one more thing. Would you be interested in writing the Tom Clancy Jack Ryan Jr. series? And it, you know, it floored me. And I knew he was the editor for both, but the, I didn't realize the writer before me is, is a fantastic guy. His name is Mike Madden, had decided he was done with the series. And so Tom Colgan, in addition to managing a whole bunch of individual book series, in it, uh, you know, mine, he manages uh, Mark Graney's The Gray Man series. He's also in charge of um, the Robert Ludlum um, follow-on books, the Tom Clancy ones, the W.B. Griffin. And so He's, he's been given the responsibility to go out and find writers to continue those series and, and keep those legacies alive. And so it was great for me because he's the same editor for my series. Um, so I didn't have to worry about competing editors or anything like that. And then he's also You've worked together. Very, mm -hmm. Yeah, we've worked together before already, which was fantastic. And then he's also very much kind of the guardrails for the series and in, in that he's the continuity. He understood what happened before and was really instrumental when I came up with the plot for, for Target Acquired. And yeah, then certainly keep it. I was, was going to ask track. you, I was going to ask you about that, the, the yeah. plot, you know, did they kind of come to you and give you the framework of a story or did they come to you with a blank sheet of paper and say, you know, gave, gave you the creative uh, license to, to, to do the story? Yeah, the Clancy Foundation is fantastic in that they have, or the, the, the publisher Putnam, I think, has built up enough trust with the foundation that they are very accommodating to whatever the authors want to write. And so when what you have to do is kind of come up with a four page synopsis that describes where the book's going to go and the, and the foundation looks at that and signs off on it. But you are um, by no means hamstrung by, by that. In fact, mine was, it was funny when when the book came out, the UK version, they do their own cover for it. And um, the publishing team contacted our team in the US and said, hey, I, we've got Don's synopsis, but we want to know how much of it is still correct because we're going to design the book cover. So could you look it over and tell us? And I said, sure. And I looked it over and of the four pages, about the first paragraph and a half were still accurate and the rest I'd gone a completely different direction. And so Tom Colgan, my editor, really gave me the flexibility to do this. But when I came to it, I, I came to it with a couple of ideas. One was that I really wanted to focus the book just on Jack Ryan Jr. because there are so many incredible legacy characters that walk um, in and off stage, if you will. It's kind of like an Avengers movie a lot of the times where you get this great cast of characters, but you lose out on some of... Um, the focus and character development, you know, of an Iron Man movie versus watching Robert Downey Jr., you know, with all of his friends. And, and, and so I really wanted to do that. And then the second thing I wanted to do, like I said, when I was an FBI agent, my first job was was to work human and to run and recruit sources. And, and there's an exercise that you can do from time to time. It's called an asset validation exercise or a source validation exercise where you come up with a scenario that's used to vet your source. And it's a very benign, very controlled scenario. The source doesn't realize that because you're actually vetting them to see whether or not they will be a good source or an asset. But it's supposed to be very controlled and very benign. And I remember working on those before and thinking, you know, what would happen if it spun out of control? If something crazy happened and interrupted this exercise, if you will, and it became an actual event. And so those were the two things I kind of went into Target Acquired with. And then at the same time, like I said, I, I was lucky enough, my last job uh, before writing full-time, I worked for 
a veteran led uh, company called Amatrine that makes uh, uniforms that mask your thermal and visual signature. And so because of that, I got to meet some very interesting customers. And one of them was a, um, an E8 uh, Army um, former Green Beret who told me about this very interesting operation he did in Iraq against a apocalyptic cult full of um, Shia folks who believed that the cult leader was, was you know, an imam that had come back to, to, to lead them in, into eternity, if you will. And so I kind of grabbed pieces of that and then put it all together. And that's what became Target Acquired. But I think and I, I always that thought that happened in Idaho, you know? <laughs> yeah. Honor, duty, service. At the Veteran Crowd Network, we're focused on our next mission, bringing veterans, veteran-operated businesses, and veteran service organizations together with each other and the resources they need to prosper. That's why we are launching the Veteran Crowd Rewards Program, exclusively for our individual and corporate members. Now you can save on travel, restaurants, goods, and services from brands you trust online and at over 900,000 locations nationwide. Find out more today at VeteranCrowdNetwork.com. If you are a veteran, a veteran-operated business, or a VSO, consider the connections, the network, the benefits, the engagement, and success of working with other veterans again. The Veteran Crowd Network, you paid a lot of dues to join this club. Hey, we're listening to Don Bentley, a New York Times bestselling author. Hey, Don, let me uh, take you in a different direction sure. for a second. Uh, how did you wind up choosing to go into the Army? Yeah, so I, I like to joke that I'm the third generation of my family to go into the military, but the first one to do it willingly. So my uh -huh. my grandfather and father were both drafted, my grandfather for World War II and my father for Vietnam. And so I grew up in a very uh, patriotic household and, and grew up as a kid in the 80s as um, – very much aware of the Berlin Wall, of the difference between West and East of the Iron Curtain. In fact, you know, it's all over social media that uh, I think it was yesterday in 1984, the movie Red Dawn came out. And that mm. was, you know, a huge impact on me as a kid is this idea that it could be, you know, the, the U.S. has an invasion by Russia or somebody like that. And, and what would happen next? And so I knew I wanted to go into the military uh, from a very young age and, and was fortunate enough as I got closer to college to um, win an Army or OTC scholarship and, and did that. And I think, you know, people go into the military for a, a whole slew of different reasons. Um, some of the time it's to gain job experience, which is a great reason as well. But I really wanted to go in and do something I wouldn't be able to do anywhere else in the world and in, in any other time. And so Flying an Apache helicopter certainly fit that bill. You went to uh, Afghanistan as a troop commander. You're a decorated veteran. I wonder if there are any experiences from your time as a troop commander that sort of affected your writing. Absolutely. So the um, in in Afghanistan on June 28, 2005, I led the the QRF mission. Who was we were responding to um, the four SEALs who had been compromised as part of Operation Red Wings. And yeah. so that was, uh, Marcus Luttrell wrote an incredible book about um, his experience called Lone Survivor. And so mm -hmm. I was um, the air mission commander for a QRF that linked up with the QRF of SEALs that the 160th um, was carrying as well uh, to the point. And I, that, that Chinook was shot down in front of me and I couldn't stop it. And so that, you know, you, it, it was horrible, the worst day of my life for, for many different reasons, but one of them being that you had spent, at that point, I'd spent eight years training to, to be a, the best Apache pilot and the best um, troop commander that I could. And so the thing that I'd spent eight years doing, the moment in time when you're supposed to execute, it goes completely a different direction. And there's nothing that you can do about it. And so, you know, that, that feeling or that sense of, needing to atone for that or that that sense of you know how do you get that moment in time back again or how do you ever do something that significant in your life again um, I really put that into without sanction and so 
the main character that, um, like I said, Matt Drake that we talked about before is a, is a DIA case officer who um, his, his asset and assets family were killed in Syria and his best friend was, was horribly injured and Matt thinks that it was his fault. And so, mm-hmm. you know, part of that, part of what Matt deals with over the course of without sanction and trying to answer those questions is, is absolutely uh, things that I had to wrestle with. I've had other guests on the podcast, some Navy SEALs who were, you know, directly in, involved or around that operation as well. And it does seem to be a focal point. Um, uh, yeah. Well, hey, uh, you, you are writing books all the time. Uh, I, I, I think the folks that, that have you in their stable uh, don't want you to get off the horse. They want to keep writing. And I think you're working on another book right now called Hostile Intent. Is that the, uh, is that the title? So- yeah, so Hostile Intent is the third um, Matt Drake book, and I actually just turned that into my editor two weeks ago, but I'm, I'm working on another book um, right now that hopefully I can uh, can talk a little bit more about soon, but I'm, 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 I'm got another project I'm working right now as well, and so I'm, I, I feel like writing it very much is a, a feast or famine kind of thing where, like mm-hmm. I said, I went 17 years with three books that didn't sell and now i've got a chance to to write a whole bunch of books it seems are you like devoting all time. of your time to writing at this point yeah so about six weeks ago i made the transition to uh writing full-time so it was um it was a great feeling but also like i said i worked for a great company um with with some fantastic veterans and it was an incredibly hard decision you know and, and maybe those are some of life's best decisions where both ones are a great choice and, and you think, man, how can I leave this, but how can I not do this? And so I left about six weeks ago and have been, uh, been working as a writer since. You won't have any regrets. Uh, you know, I've never met anybody that tried something like this that regretted doing it. It may or may not work out, but you'll yeah. know, right. And, and, and you won't have that doubt of not having done it. No, I think that's absolutely right. When I got out of the army, I went and worked for a great company for three years in, in corporate America and just was not ready to do that yet. I knew that I needed I needed to still still go chase bad guys. And so the FBI at the time was recruiting and they were recruiting veterans pretty heavily. And so, you know, I was, I was looking at that and looking at that. I'm leaving this great paying job behind. I'm leaving all of this stuff to go do this other thing, you know, my crazy. And, and one of my mentors at, at GE is a, or, or, was a, a fantastic guy or is a fantastic guy who, you know, came here his, his freshman year in college from Brazil, couldn't hardly speak English and now was a, a manager and executive at GE. And I really expected him to tell me to stay. And what he told me instead, and he was in his mid fifties then. And he said, you know what, Don, when I look back on my life right now, the things I regret the most are when I didn't take a swing. And he said, and, and when I played it safe and he's like, don't play it safe, go chase this thing. Maybe it'll work out. If you, maybe it won't. But as to your point, it's a lot easier to, to have tried something and failed at it than live with the regret of man. I, I should have taken that swing. That's fantastic stuff. Hey, uh, how do people get in touch with you? Are you uh, out, you're out promoting the book or have been a little bit. Uh, sure. And uh, so how do people find you obviously uh, on Amazon and other sources like that? Yep. You can get the book anywhere books are sold or the books. Uh, but the best way to connect with me is if you go to my web- website, it's donbentleybooks.com. So just D-O-N-B-E-N-T-L-E-Y books.com and you can sign up for my newsletter there and we talk about giveaways and books and everything and then the website also has um, information about all the books um, that are out right now the Matt Drake series the Tom Clancy Target Acquired as well as what I'm working on and then if you're also a social media kind of guy or girl you can find me on Twitter or Facebook and both of it is at Bentley Don B Um, so at B-E-N-T-L-E-Y D-O-N-B we're going to put links to all of your social media handles and your Thank website you. on the, on the show notes. Hey, Hey, hey Don, what, uh, just last question. What is, what do you think, what does the next year, 24 months look like for you now that you've six weeks into, uh, you know, jumping, jumping in with both feet, what, you know, what's the plan yeah. here? So I'm, I'm lucky enough um, right now to be on a track where I, I've got two books due a year. And so I, and those, those tend to alternate. One of them's the Matt Drake book, and then one of them's um, a different one that I'm working on. And so for the next um, 
year and a half or so, I know I'm, I'm under contract or about to be under contract for, um, I'm under contract for, for two more Matt Drake books and then um, another two books that I hope to be able to talk about soon. And so going to be writing like crazy, but I'm, I'm fortunate enough, like I said, I've got some very good mentors and Brad Taylor and, and Mark Graney, both of those guys have done this and have done this exceptionally well. And, and so, you know, one of the things Mark Graney told me when I was looking at um, going to write full time and what that meant and, and what the risk were, he's like, you know what, bet on yourself. He said, if you work hard, if you write a bunch of words every day, you're going to have things to sell and the, and people are going to be interested in buying them. And he's like, that's what I did. He said, when I went full time, I didn't, didn't have, you know, I wasn't making full time money at the point at that point, but I bet on myself and bet that what I created would be valuable. And I, I feel like, you know, being a writer is very much like, like owning a small business and, and kind of that entrepreneurial mindset. If, if you're willing to work hard and, and willing to like what we said before, take the opportunities that come to you, think you can do all right at it. So that's what I'll be doing for the next year or two. Well, congratulations on all this great stuff. Uh, best wishes with uh, uh, the existing books and the new one. And uh, we'll be looking forward to those things coming out. Hey, folks, you've been listening to the Spotlight on the Veteran Crowd Network. Our guest has been New York Times bestselling author Don Bentley. Don, thank you so much for being a guest on our show. I'll throw out an army bravo Zulu to you for being our guest today, folks. And that's a wrap. Thank you for listening to Spotlight by Veteran Crowd. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. For more information and uploads, please visit our website at veterancrowdnetwork.com. We'll see you next time.